so now we will be discussing about the reproduction in fungi most of every organism we see will reproduce the reproduction is done to create a generation next generation and maintain their population right so fungi also reproduce by means three different methods of reproduction is seen in fungi the first re the reproduction in fungi may be sexual or asexual in reproduction so we know that the difference between sexual and asexual reproduction in sexual reproduction only a single uh, only a single individual is involved while in case of sexual reproduction both male and female individuals are involved that means the parents are involved in the sexual reproduction asexually the fungi can reproduce by means of vegetative reproduction vegetative reproduction is a type of asexual reproduction in which a single parent is involved so the fungi which reproduce vegetatively can reproduce by three methods first is by budding second is by the process of fragmentation and third is by the process of fission we will be discussing each and everything in the next slide okay so in vegetative reproduction there are three main methods of reproduction it is by the process of budding next is by the process of fragmentation and also fission also asexually the true asexual reproduction in fungi is by the method of production of asexual spores fungi produces certain spores which are seen everywhere that was the first point the second point we discussed in the beginning of the lecture that they are seen they are cosmopolitan in nature which means they can be seen everywhere in place the spores are seen everywhere in the environment it can the spores can be dispersed in water spores can be seen in air or it can be seen in soil or it can be seen attached with some other organism so fungal spores are everywhere in the environment so in asexual reproduction the true asexual reproduction means the production of the next generation by the means of spores they produce spores and the spores are carried out by different agents and when the spore get in contact with a suitable environment they produce or they germinate i earlier mentioned the suitable what are the suitable environmental condition for fungi right okay so some of the asexual spores which are produced by the fungi are zoospore aplanospore and conidia aplanospore is also known as sporangiospores because they are produced in a, in a specialized organ a specialized part a specialized reproductive part of the hyphae spores are produced in a specialized sometimes spores are produced in a specialized condition specialized part or the spores are just produced by the breakage or fragmentation of mycelia mycelia may converted in mycelia fragments of mycelia get converted into spores or they can also seen in some specialized parts specialized parts which is only meant for the production of the spores so in what is the definition for asexual reproduction a single individual give rise to a genetic duplicate of the progenitor without genetic contribution from the another individual this is the precise definition for asexual reproduction right only a single individual is only a single individual is involved and the individual only contribute the genetic contrib only contribute the genetic composition of the single individual there is no other combination or there is no other genetic combination of uh, some other individual only a single individual is involved so the copy the exact copy is made exact copy of the progenitor is made in the next generation one thing that to be remembered is that fungi you can see fungi undergo different types of reproduction why fungi undergo different types of reproduction if we compare it with human beings we only undergo sexual reproduction right we don't have any other methods of reproduction unless uh, sexual reproduction but in fungi they reproduce different method usually asexual reproduction of asexual reproduction are uh, usually fungi undergo asexual reproduction during favorable condition favorable climatic condition what is favorable climatic condition for a fungi i have earlier mentioned humidity optimal humidity and warm 
climatic condition the surface or the substratum should be humid humid in the sense it should be wet mostly moist in condition Mo it does not means it should be very much in moist but temperature within 20 to 30 degrees celsius so during during this type of climatic or favorable condition fungi reproduce asexually so during unfavorable climatic condition or unfavorable condition not climate unfavorable condition the fungi produce sexual sexually they produce their gametes we will study the life cycle of fungi very in very detail when we are studying about the classification of fungi we will study everything in detail so we talked about the sexual reproduction the asexual reproduction and the vegetative reproduction okay now the spores which are produced asexually fungi as i mentioned fungi can produce spore asexually also and fungi can produce spore sexually also if a fungi produce spores asexually then the spores are known as mitospores that means these all spores can be generally called as mitospore what is a mitospore a mitospore is a spore which is produced mitotically what is mitosis and meiosis right i think you have studied earlier during your lower classes what is mitosis and meiosis mitosis is the production of spores which mitosis means it is equational division right what is meiosis meiosis is known as the reductional division reductional division which involves the production of gametes so during mitosis a uh, diploid if we are taking a mitosis condition if a cell is a, if a cell is in diploid condition diploid when a cell undergo mitosis it will be forming the same same diploid condition will be maintained after mitosis mitosis is a part of a cell division process what is meiosis meiosis is known as reductional division a haplo a diploid cell after meiosis become haploid in condition so the spores which are produced asexually are known as mitospores because the spores are produced mitotically skipping the meiosis why the spores are being produced mitotically because it is to produce a large number right these spores are produced in a specialized organ which is known as the sporangia asexual spores are produced the spores are produced in a specialized organ known as sporangia or it, it it may be produced during a cell division fragmentation cell fragmentation right so in a sporangia in consider this as a sporangia many number of spores will be produced mitotically a large number of uh, spores will be produced mitotically after when the condition is favorable this sporangia breaks and the spores are released spores are released by uh, spores are released and it is taken by different agents these are the things to be remembered next the spores which are produced asexually are known as the ascospores the spores which are produced sexually are known as ascospores we will be discussing each and every point very clearly and very in detail in the next coming slides so what is the definition of spores spores are single cells produced by either fragmentation of mycelia or they are produced in the specialized structure i think you can write down this lecture into your not notes so everything is discussed in detail now we will be discussing in detail each and every classification of reproduction first is about the budding budding is the formation of a bud in a cell so it is usually seen in organism like yeast which is unicellular we know the common uh, yeast which is used baker's yeast right saccharomyces cerevisiae and it is also seen in budding is also seen in some other filamentous fungi also so what is budding budding is the process in which a mother cell in a mother cell mother cell is the parent cell from which a new bud will be formed a new bud will be enlarged here is the diagram this is the mother cell a new bud will be formed a new enlargement is seen here cytoplasm also get enlarged and in the next step the cytoplasm get divided and a wall is formed thus a new bud is formed okay 
you can see here three new buds are formed the first bud is here the second here and the latest newly produced bud is here so this bud can be can behave as a spore later this bud will be break down according to mechanical forces or some other any other internal forces also which is done during their metabol metabolism so these cells or the these bud behaves as a spore and the spores are released and they get germinated some elsewhere this is the definition or the thing what is budding but pinches of a hypha of filamentous fungi and it behaves as a spore as they germinate to a structure called as germ tube which develop into a new hypha new hyphae means a uh, bud will be formed a bud will be released and bud will be consider a spore or a bud which is which gets con in contact with a substratum and a germ tube will be produced from the bud and from uh, the germ tube the nourishment will be occurred and mycelia or the body will be produced and later it will be flourishing as a good fungi it, i have told you er earlier that it is commonly seen in yeast which is a unicellular fungi and it, it can be also seen in some other fil filamentous fungi the thing to remember is that you need to only by heart the name yeast because it is mentioned in your syllabus so next is a hydra hydra is a freshwater organism it, it belongs to a nidarian it is a nidarian which is not a fungi but i have written it for your general information because we have studied it in our lower classes also the organism which do budding right the main organism is fungi fungi in fungi it is yeast and in other organism it is hydra it's a freshwater nidarian next is the process of fragmentation what is the frag what is the process of fragmentation from the word fragmentation itself we can understand it is the breakdown of breakdown right the process of breaking down of a organism's body it may be due to there it may be due to external forces or ex external mechanical forces or it may be due to their in the internal metabolic forces which are produced in their body internally so it is the simplest method simplest method mycelial separation into fragments and each components grow into a separate mycelium here is a fungi it is it's their hyphae it got broken down due to some of some forces some unknown forces we don't know that so each each fragment will grow into a new mycelium a new an entire new fungi this is the simplest method of re reproduction asexual reproduction the third method of vegetative reproduction or the third method of asexual reproduction we are discussing uh, the vegetative reproduction so the third method of vegetative reproduction which is done by the fungi is by the method of fission fission or it is known as cell division so a mother cell undergoes cell division forming daughter cells the cell division initiation is done when the dna starts replication so the dna replication is the initial step for the cell division or fission a mother cell divides undergoing a nuclear division they split into daughter cells further these daughter cells undergo further cell division forming a colony so cell division is also a simplest method of vegetative reproduction there is a mother cell this mother cell undergo fission you may have heard binary fission right binary fission is also a sub subdivision of fission in which involves a cell is equally divided into two halves these halves are called as the daughter cells okay and the point to be remembered is that cell division starts with the dna replication here in fission okay so thus by eventually uh, if a cell divides many times the daughter cells further divide and forms like their granddaughter granddaughter cells right so they start dividing and they forms a colony so this is the end of vegetative reproduction there are also many other vegetative reproduction or asexual reproduction that we are not planning to discuss in this lecture okay so next is the asexual reproduction i earlier mentioned the reproduction of fungi in asexually is by budding fragmentation fission and the next method of reproduction in fungi is by the formation of spores i earlier mentioned there are mainly sp many spores which are produced by the fungi 
the fungi which produce spores asexually is known as mitospores which skips the process of meiosis which produce the spores mitotically 2n to 2n okay the process of mitosis and meiosis will be discussed later in the coming lectures you may have chapter of cell division soon so we will be discussing in that chapter so asexual reproduction by the spore formation is the next method by which the fungi produces there are many many spores zoospores uh, uh, sporangiospore or aplanospores right conidia formation and uridospores or tilitiospores these are the different types of spores which are produced by the fungi so the asexual reproduction by fungi by spore formation right the first spore spore formation we are going to discuss is about the zoospore zoospore are certain spores or certain cells single cells which are produced by the fungi asexually in a specialized organ called as zoosporangium a general term we need to remember is that sporangium is a structure which is used to produce spore if it is known as zoosporangium if the structure is known as zoosporangium you need to remember that the sporangium the spores in that sporangium is zoospores so what are zoospores zoospores are actually uninucleate we know that it is a cell it contains a uninuclei one nuclei and apart from other spores the uniqueness of the zoospore is that they are motile motile in nature motile means they can they are self propelled they can move by their own propulsion so for a propulsion we need flagella so they have flagella they may be uniflagellate or multiflagellate uniflagellate or multiflagellate uniflagellate means they only have one flagella one flagella is used for the propulsion a good example of uniflagellate fungi is synchytrium and multiflagellate fungi are pythium and saprolegnia so these names are to be by hearted because these are asked in neat previous question so <coughs> flagella can be uniflagellate or multiflagellate i i think you understood the meaning of flagella uniflagellate and multiflagellate so the zoospore are uninucleated thin walled formed inside a zoosporangia self propelled by the help of flagella now if we look at this diagram we can see a zoosporangia a zoosporangia is a part or a structure or a reproductive structure of a fungi which is used to produce zoospores here you can see a hyphae here a modified or a reproductive part which is known as zoosporangium zoosporangium produces zoospores zoospores at a particular condition or a particular time period they release zoospores zoospores are self propelled they does not need any other mechanism mechanism external mechanism they can be self propelled in water usually zoospore are released into water how these zoospore find their how th how they are involved in uh, fertilization or how they are involved in germination these things we will be discussing it in detail later so they can be propelled in water air it is according to the environment in which the fungi is producing spores so next we will be study we will be looking about aplanospores and conidia and also a spore which is known as uridospore and tilitospore the second type of asexual spore production is by means of a planospore a planospore or they are known as sporangiospore they are thin walled non motile spores which are produced in a specialized structure which is known as the sporangium or the plural it is known as sporangia so they are non motile in structure so they can't be self propelled so they need an external agent usually aplanospores are seen dispersed in the water current they move ac according to the current of the water the common examples of fungi which follow the aplanospore mode of asexual reproduction is rhizopus and mugger the examples are to be remembered so the aplanospore or the spores i earlier mentioned that the spores are produced in a specialized structure sporangium so the spores are produced in a specialized structure which is known as sporangium 
how a specialized structure is formed it is further the modification of fungi modification of the hypha so if we look at the sporangio sporangio sporangium of the aplanospore we can understand the sporangium sporangium is held in a specialized structure specialized stand we can say it as a stand which is known as the sporangiophore what is a sporangiophore they are the specialized hyphae which is used which is meant to hold the entire part okay the spores are produced inside a specialized structure which is known as the sporangium the uniqueness of this uh, or the property of this uh, these spores is that they are non motile non motile means they do they lack flagella they do not have the presence of flagella okay and there is another structure which is known as columella columella bears the entire spores the spores are stick together to a part which is known as the columella after a particular time during favorable condition these spores these spores get disposed into the environment we can't see these spores because i earlier mentioned that these all structures are usually microscopic in nature so the spores are everywhere in our environment but we can we can see it with our naked eyes okay next method is by conidia by the production of conidia conidia are also certain spores which are produced by the vegetatively uh, which are produced by the asexual fungi they are also thin walled they are non motile they are exogenously produced exogenously produced means they are produced as a part of the hyphae the hyphae usually a normal hyphae get converted into conidia conidia can be seen in chain form like the thing i have drawn here right this is the newest coni this is the oldest conidia and the, this is the newest conidia formed okay these are the modification of the fungi a modification of the hyphae hyphae have modified into a spore structure which is known as the conidia conidia can be seen as a chain or as a single conidia which is formed single conidia is seen in pithium and phytophthora fungi and they are seen as a chain of conidia in aspergillus and penicillium fungi these examples are to be biherded they can be also seen in the form of a branched structure conidia can also be seen in a branched structure there is a particular part which is known as the conidi conidia for what is a conidia for they are the specialized hyphae which is used to bear the conidia right they are specialized hyphae which are used to bear the conidia and conidia can also be seen in the form of branched structure the diagram is drawn here these are the chain of conidia they are not formed in a straight manner but they are formed in a branch manner so this will be the newest conidia and this will be the oldest conidia they are found in a branched form these structures are known as steric mata steric mata are the branches which hold the conidia this the entire structure or the entire reproductive structure is held by held by conidia for what is a conidia for they are the specialized hyphae which are used to bear which bear the reproductive part of the fungi which for for means it will be a stand like structure which is used to hold the things like sporangia for conidia for okay now there is only a one portion left in asexual reproduction which is about the tilidiospore or the uridiospore i think you have understood it and you should be writing down the examples and it should be biherded so the next method of so spore production the next method of asexual spore production the last method is the production by uridospores and also the tilidiospores these are also asexual spores which are produced by the fungi for the means of asexual reproduction so what are uridospores and tilidiospores uridospores are binucleate spores which are produced in clusters which are known as uridosori the cluster of uridospores are known as the uridosori each spore produce single each spore produce single spore singly at the tip of the stalk 
so this is a uridol spore uridol spore it is a binucleate spore it is binucleate spore means which contains two nuclei per spore it is if it is formed in a cluster then it is known as uridol sorry each spore is produced at the single tip when we were comparing or when we were studying about the previous types of spores these types of spores were produced in a group right some were produced in a group which examples were zoospore right they were produced in a zoosporangia in a cluster and the second type of store spore which which we studied was a planospore or sporangiospore which were also produced in a group but the third spore was about conidia conidia is formed either singly or in a chain so apart from these spores uridospores and tilitospores are produced singly they are produced as a single type okay a good example of a fungi which produces the uridospores are paxinia paxinia is also known as rust fungi wheat rust fungi because it causes disease in wheat plants and the related plants also they every year about 20 percentage of decline or 20 percentage of the plants are affected by this fungi so it is known as the wheat rust fungi what do you mean by rust rust is the formation of certain pustules like formation a small small pustules are formed on the aerial parts of the plant especially from in wheat plants we know how a rust is formed right by the oxidation oxidation i i am talking about the rust which is formed usually in iron right iron materials which is caused by the oxidation so if we are analyzing or if we are visualizing the rust how a rust is formed or a, what is a rust the same structure or we can compare that to the rust fungi the rust it, it will be similar in uh, visualization next is about the tilitospores tilitospores are thick walled cells they are bicelled two cells per spore a spore contain two cell and each cell contains binucleate each cell contains two nucleus in structure there is a terminology which is known as binucle binucleation which means binucleated means two nuclei per cell there is also a terminology which is known as dicaryon what is a dicaryon dicaryon is a condition in which an intermediate two nuclei cells are produced the two nuclei will be haploid in condition which we will be discussing in very detail in sexual reproduction okay the fungi which produces through tilitospores a good example is paxinia we trust fungi so this is the end of asexual reproduction now we will be discussing about sexual re sexual reproduction in fungi what is sexual reproduction we know that two parentage are required two parents are required for the purpose of sexual reproduction so sexual reproduction i also earlier mentioned it occurs during the unfavorable condition of for fungi for human beings we know we are having sexual reproduction whether it is favorable or unfavorable we will only reproduce by sexual method of reproduction so what is sexual reproduction it involves the formation and fusion of gametes of different parentage so in sexual reproduction of fungi gametes are produced and these gametes contain a nuclei gametes are actually known as sex cells right they are cells so these cells contain nuclei there will be a male gamete there will be a female gamete male gamete will contain male nuclei female gamete will contain female nuclei this two gametes fuse together and forms a cell and this cell is known as the zygote we will be discussing it very detail in the coming slides so the two fusing protoplast are known as the sex cells or the gametes there is a terminology which is known as protoplast what is protoplast protoplast is the entire cell entity including cytoplasm and the nucleus 
means protoplasm is equal to cytoplasm plus nuclei we can generally say so what is a cytoplasm then cytoplasm is the entire cell entity which is not having a nucleus cytoplasm protoplasm minus nucleus is equal to cytoplasm right so in sexual reproduction of a fungi these are to be remembered in sexual reproduction of fungi there are mainly three phases what are the three phases in the sexual reproduction first one is plasmogamy second one is karyogamy and third one is the process of meiosis each phase if we if we are if we visualize each word we can understand the correct meaning of each phases or each stages what is the meaning of plasmogamy plasmogamy involves the fusion of the protoplasm right karyon karyon means nucleus karyogamy means the fusion of nucleus nuclear fusion next is the meiosis process meiosis is known as the reductional division usually the gametes are formed by the process of reductional division for, so for gamete formation meiosis is required so we will be visualizing each and every we will be studying each and every points very clearly in the coming slides so i hope you have written it in sexual reproduction of a fungi the fungi will be reproducing by means of certain gametes or by means of certain somatic cells the somatic cells of the fungi may get fused together to form a sexual reproduction to be a part in a sexual reproduction so in fungi fusion may be carried out by motile or non non motile gametes we know that in sexual reproduction it is the reproduction in which two different parentage are required so these two different parentage are brought together by means of gametes or the somatic cells of the hyphae may get turned into the somatic cells of the hyphae may fuse together to form uh, sexual reproduction to be a part in sexual reproduction okay this is the first point next i earlier mentioned that sexual reproduction in fungi have three different stages in their sexual reproduction cycle the first stage is known as the plasmogamy what is plasmogamy i earlier mentioned that plas plasmogamy is the fusion of the protoplasm two different protoplasm or two different gametes gametes are actually known as sex cells the cell sex cells have the presence of protoplasm because it is a cell so the two different cells of two different parentage are brought together and they get fused so in the process of fusion the first step is the plasmogamy plasmogamy is the fusion of the protoplasm two different haploid protoplasm come together gets in contact and they fuse together and they move to the next stage which is known as the karyogamy what is karyogamy karyon means nucleus and the process is the fusion of the nucleus so first the two sex cells come together they come in contact and the fusion of protoplasm occurs then the next step so they they have become a common cell right or a common cell so the next step involved is the fusion of the nucleus which is known as the karyogamy so two haploid cells or two sex cells comes together and they form and they fuse together the protoplasm get fused the next step is the fusion of the nucleus which is known as the karyogamy so during karyogamy two haploid nucleus come together to form a diploid nucleus that is the second step in third step the fused product undergoes reductional division which is known as the meiosis so after fusion the hap the diploid nucleus the fusion product is a diploid nucleus then the diploid nucleus thus then forms haploid nucleus by the process of meiosis or known as the reductional division reductional division which reduces the number of chromosome into its half number right this is the process this is the entire process which involves in which is uh, which belongs to the sexual reproduction next the three points earlier mentioned we can take it in case of spores also and we can also take it in case of somatic hyphae also i earlier said that sexual reproduction can occur in two ways either two gametes come together and they fuse together or they or 
the other condition is that a somatic hyphae can turn or two somatic hyphae of compatible uh, nuclei compatible hyphae two compatible hyphae come together uh, and they fuse together the same three process occur there also there's another term which is known as dicaryon dicaryon after the fusion after plasmogamy in some fungi in some fungi there occurs a dicaryotic phase which means after fusion the two haploid nucleus come together before fusion there is an intervening stage in which a cell contains two nuclei the, the cell which contains two nuclei is known as the dicaryotic cell and the, that phase is known as dicaryon dicaryotic phase but later they fuse together to form a diploid nucleus in the later stage but there will be an intervening stage which contains two nuclei per cell that stage is known as the dicaryotic stage so here there is a diagram representing two different cells two cells they are they come together they are having different nuclei different nuclei in the sense the nuclei will be same but it will be having different genetic composition different parentage so same genetic com composition but different parentage so they come together first their protoplasm gets fused then the nucleus gets fused and they form a zygote this is the fusion product which is 2n later it undergoes meiosis to form haploid spores okay the process of meiosis is for the production of sex gametes also so this is this, this will be forming it will be the when after meiosis if a haploid number of gamete is produced it will be the beginning of the next step of the reproduction so this is about the three phases of sexual reproduction in fungi after the meiosis meiotic division the cells become reduced into haploid condition in nature so this the meiosis is usually will usually occur in case of certain structures known as gametangia what are gametangia gametangia are certain structure which produces which undergo reduction division so first plasmogamy occurred then karyogamy then meiosis meiosis leads to the production of spores a diploid zygote was formed later gametes are formed for the next generation the gametes are either they will be gametes will be sex they are known as sex cells the gametes will be either spores or they may uh, the gametes may be formed by the fusion of or reproduction may be occurred by the fusion of the thallus right the somatic cells of the thalli or the hyphae so the fungi forms fruiting body where the reduction division occurs leading to the haploid spores right fruiting body in the first slide of my lecture i drawn i have drawn a structure of mushroom mushroom is known as the fruiting body of the particular fungi most of the fungi can produce mushrooms so the mushrooms are the fruiting body of the fungi so in that fruiting body after meiotic division many spores will be formed haploid spore right what is haploid in condition n number of n number of cro when chromosome number is reduced to n further after the fusion the zygote was formed with a condition of 2n then it undergoes meiotic division which is also known as the reductional division forming haploid spores <clears throat> the second point is that sex cells or the gametes are produced in the inside the cells of a thallus which are known as the gametangia i already mentioned they are produced in a particular structure they are produced inside a particular structure in the thallus or the hyphae which is known as the gametangia right look in <coughs> gametangia look in sexual reproduction i told that there are two types of gametes right so male gamete will be formed in male gametangia and female gamete will be formed in female gametangia their structure will be different the same condition applies to the bryophytes also they also produces their next generation gametes in particular structure which is known as gametangia which is formed by the conversion of their thalli somatic structure into or vegetative structure into a reproductive structure 
so in that reproductive structure the sex cells or sex cells or the gametes are produced inside it in the gametangia so there will be two gametangia male gametangia which is known as the antheridium female gametangia which is known as the ascogonium or the oogonium in case of the antheridium male gametes will be formed in case of the female gametangia which is known as the ascogonium the female gametes will be formed okay if the fusing gametes are morphologically indistinguishable then it is known as isogametes you just think that in sexual reproduction we know that two different gametes are involved right if the two gam if the two gametes are exactly similar that means if the male gamete and the female gametes are exactly similar then it is known as isogametes like a twins even though in twins we can distinguish between them but they can't they are indistinguishable if the gametes are indistinguishable we can't distinguish them it as a male or a female gamete both will be similar in structure if this condition occur then these gametes are known as the isogametes and the fusion and the sexual reproduction or the fusion of the gametes will be known as the isogametes isogamete fusion or fertilization so the first condition is that the fusing gametes are morphologically similar exactly similar like in the diagram which i have drawn here look here the both the gametes are morphologically similar both are exactly same we can't distinguish whether this is male or this is female this is male or this is female right they can be motile they can be non motile also it is according to the class of fungi from which the spore is produced if the gametes are distinguishable okay we can say that this is a male gamete this is a female gamete then it is known as heterogametes hetero means different right iso means the same one so in case of heterogametes we can easily distinguish the gametes into male and female right so heterogametes can be of two types first one is anisogamous isogamous and isogamous and the second point second division of the heterogametes is the oogamous type so here it will be anisogamic fertilization there will be oogamous fertilization so what happens in a anisogamic fertilization it will be opposite that of isogamous right the 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 fusing gametes will be differ will differ in their morphology either in their shape size etc look here there are two gametes i think it is visible for you here one gamete is large the second gamete is small these gametes will undergo fusion and they are morphologically different right i will draw a scale so you can understand the size of the fusing gametes look it will be large it will be small same condition arises here also look now we can understand the size difference right so if this condition occurs this is known as the anisogamous type of uh, reproduction and in this case it is known as the oogamous type of uh, reproduction in oogamous type of sexual reproduction the male and the female are already they are having different their morphology because it is a heterogamous fertilization in oogamous type the male will be large sorry the male will be small and motile motile means they will be having some propelling mechanism self propelling mechanism mechanism like flagella okay and in case of female they are in motile means they can't be they are sedentary means they can't be moved and they are and uh, they are non motile they are female in uh, female which is larger in position the male so they will be these gametes i already mentioned these gametes are produced inside a gametangia a producing structure a spore producing structure some some will be formed by the modification of certain thalli and they will be releasing the gametes some will be formed inside a particular structure which is known as the gametangia in gametangia the male gametangia is known as the antheridium antheridium will be producing male gametes in case of the female it is known as ascogonium or oogonium and they will be producing they will be having egg cell right so in sexual reproduction we know that it is the fusion so 
the sperm cells or the sex cells sperm here means the cell which is produced by the male gametes so they will be either they will be motile or immotile it is according to the class of fungi so they will be they should so according to oogamous type of fertilization the male gamete should reach the female gamete right how it should reach it is according to the certain condition some will be having some some will be having flagella they will be coming by their own some will be coming by external currents like air current water current or by means of certain animals or etc animals etc okay so this is the different types of gametes which are involved so in case of plasmogamy there are certain conditions in which there are certain cases or there are certain chances in which the plasmogamy can occur or there are different methods by which a plasmogamy can occur plasmogamy is the fusion of the cyto uh, plasmo protoplasm right i earlier mentioned what is protoplasm the entire cell constituents including cytoplasm and the nucleus is known as the protoplasm so protoplasmic fusion is known as it means two protoplasm get fused two different protoplasm of compatible nuclei or compatible protoplasm get fused this process is known as the fusion or uh, protoplasmic fusion or the plasmogamy so there are different methods by which a nuclei will be meeting other nuclei or a nuclei will be meeting the xl the methods are as follows first is the gametangial contact second one is the gametangial copulation and third one is the spermatization and fourth one is the somatogamy so what is first we will be discussing about the gametangial contact what is gametangial contact what is gametangia i earlier mentioned they are the structures which produces the gametes right so gametangial contact two gametangia are needed in case of asexual reproduction right so in gametangial contact two gametangia of compatible or two compatible gametangia means a male gametangia and a female gametangia what is male gametangia called male gametangia is called as the antheridium right and the female gametangia is known as the oogonium oogonium is called in general the name may, may be varied according to the classes of the fungi so male gametangia and female gametangia come will be coming and they will be uh, fusing together right so at the point of contact there there are two cases there 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 will occur two cases there occurs two cases the first case is that either the transfer um, of the nucleus or the plas protoplasm is by means of a simple pore a simple pore will be formed at the point of contact in the second case there will be the formation of the fertilization tube from the male gamete or the antheridium from the not male the male gamete uh, the male producing organ the male gamete producing organ the antheridium we know that the male gamete will be the nuclei right or the sex cell in which the nuclei is involved so look in this diagram here there is an antheridium which is known as the male gamete and this is known as the female gamete which is known as the oogonium both will be coming in contact at the point of contact either there will be a small hole which is known as pore through the pore the male gamete will be transferred to the female gamete always you should remember that the male gamete is being transferred to the female gamete okay so that medium of transfer or the medium of the transfer will be either through pore or through certain fertilization tube male nuclei from the gametangia which is known as the antheridium is transferred to the female gametangia by means of pores at the point of contact or by means of fertilization tube that arises from the antheridium the fertilization tube arises from the antheridium after fertilization means the nuclei will be moving through here and it will undergo fertilization in the egg this is the egg cell it is also nuclei but here it is a female gamete right so this male gamete will be coming here and it will be fusing to the female gamete in the nuclei so after fertilization after fertilization means after fertilization after the fusion of the nuclei it is known as after fertilization is known as post fertilization okay post fertilization 
either the anthridia collapse collapse means either the anthridia disintegrate and go or both of the gametangia may disintegrate leaving the fused zygote the condition may be varied according to fungi different classes okay so post fertilization either both the gametangia or the anthridia may eventually collapse after after the method of gametangial contact the next method is gametangial copulation what is gametangial copulation what was gametangial contact the contact between two gametangia which later then is involved in the process of protoplast fusion or plasmogamy so what is gametangial contact gametangial cond sorry gametangial copulation what is gametangial copulation what is copulation copulation means the mixing right or it is also it also means conjugating right conjugating or the mixing of the two different parentage conjugation means it is the mixing so in gametangial copulation copulation means conjugation in gametangial copulation of hyphae what happens two different hyphae of different parentage come together at the point of contact there may be they may be either transferring both of their content to form a common structure which is known as the zygospore but in case of gametangial contact what happened only the male nucleus is being transferred from the anthridium to the oogonium right only the male nucleus was transferred or the movement happens only for the male gamete but in gametangial contact the fusion occurs between the entire contact after the fusion or the mixing or the conjugation and a structure is formed the structure is known as the zygospore zygospore is a spore right so at a particular instant of time this spore will be released this spore will be containing haploid nucleus right because we have studied here plasmogamy occurs then karyogamy occurs then meiosis so in case of the spores which are sexually produced the end spore will be haploid in condition right spores are haploid in condition haploid means they are ha having n number of chromosome what is n number of chromosome what is haploid what is diploid everything we have studied in our lower classes so i think there is no need to explain these things right if there is a condition i will be explaining it later so sexual fusion occurs between the entire, con entire con content of two gametangia in any one of the two following one is either by the pore at the point of contact second is by the complete dissolution of the wall two different gametangia are coming together right we can write it here as plus or minus it is according to our wish plus or minus means male and female opposite sex so different parentage right so they are coming together at the point of contact either a pore will be formed or a or their entire wall will be dissoluted and they will be forming a common common content right the common content is known as the zygospore later it forms the zygospore zygospore contains haploid spores after meios meiotic division or the reductional division so this is the very easiest topic and about gametangial copulation next there is also other method two other method which is known as the spermatization and somatogamy right what is spermatization spermatization means the formation of sperm cells right sperm cells here means male gametes sperm cells everywhere means male gamete so the sperm cells or the male gametes are being produced here the sperm cells are known as the spermatia spermatia and the sp spermatia are produced externally right externally in certain structures which are known as the spermatophores i earlier said what is the meaning of pore right it will be a stalk like substance which will be holding the holding the gametes which will be holding the gametes and which will be involved in the ejection of the gametes so here spermatia pores are there spermatia which produces spermatia pore which produces the spermatia the sex the sperm cells and they will be released so what is a spermatia they are a uninucleate a unicellular it will be only a single cell and non motile gametes what is what do you mean by non motile here non motile non motile means they do not have any flagella they can be only moved they can only be propelled by external agents like 
water currents or air currents okay so spermatia force will be bearing a group of spermatia like here here there are many spermatia here can also be there can also be spermatia i have only drawn in one single hyphae look this is a spermatia force spermatia force is a modified hyphae which is used for bearing spermatia the spermatia at a particular point of time they will be released so spermatia should reach their female egg right so the structure which receives is known as receive the spermatia is known as the trichogyne trichogyne right trichogyne is a female receptive hyphae which accepts the spermatia after acceptance then plasmogamy karyogamy and meiosis may occur right that is the further process the last step which is involved is known as the somatogamy what is somato what is somatic cells somatic cells are the cells which are vegetative in nature right so the vegetative cells this somatic cells or the somatogamy occurs in some higher fungi where the sex organs are lacking in such cases the hyphae of both the compatible hyphae of both the uh, parentage gets fused together this fusing process is known as somatogamy gamy means fusion there is a other term i will read the sentence sexual reproduction occurs by anastomosis of somatic hyphae bearing nuclei of different parentage what is anastomosis anastomosis is a medical term or a biological term which involves the surgical connection it is the connection between two hyphae which helps in the connection between or the fusion between two nuclei the diagram the diagram is drawn, drawn here these are the two different parentage or two different spores here two hyphae or two mycelia or two hyphae hyphae is the single unit structure so two hyphae will be coming together and they will be fusing to form a structure fusing to form for sexual reproduction process right so this is the end of the sexual reproduction or the end of the part 1 of the lecture so after this we will be discussing about the classification of the fungi according to your uh, which is given in your ncert textbook right which is divided into four different classes asco phyco basidio detro the four different classes of fungi we will be discussing it in very detail in very depth how they reproduce what are their Uh, structures right the structure will be same but in different classes the structures will be having slightly variation because we have discussed many structures here many reproductive method, uh, methods here so each and each and every classes will be following their own reproductive structures so this is the end of the lecture i hope you like it please mention your valuable comments please mention the things which i should be adding later so thank you